Fall of a Winner. Day 2 of the Initiation. Part 2. When we last left, our hero Ash Ketchum was currently in a heated battle against the powerful salon maiden Annabelle. In the first round it was Ash's Buizel versus Annabelle's Drifloom, initially an even match-up. But, thanks to a foreign yet familiar visitor in Ash's head, the trainer's lack of confidence cost him the match. With two Pokemon left on his side and three left on the Frontier Brain's side, how will this battle turn out? Weasel, Ash stared at the Sea Weasel's Pokeball, after he called him back, with sadness. He let him down, all because of his incompetence. He should have paid more attention to Annabelle's attack, instead he got Weasel hurt. Pikachu stayed silent, as this was not his partner's normal behavior. Annabelle stared worriedly at Ash. What happened to that brave trainer that took his loss in a stride when he first battled her? What happened to the trainer that would stare at awe at his opponent tactics and complimented them even when he was losing? Now it was like he was falling into a pit of despair. He was distracted by the thought of having his Pokemon harmed. Battles were now a chore for him, not an enjoyment or a way to express his excitement. Keep it together girl, she said to herself. You need to make him realize this. She looked toward her Drifloon, still standing but panting hard due to the earlier damage done to it. Drifloon could defiantly hold its own for a few more hits but she didn't want to exhaust the poor thing, not after all the hard work he had done for the first round. Drifloon, return. She raised her Pokeball to call him back in a beam of red light. Get a good rest my friend. If anything, you deserved it. She clicked off another Pokeball from her belt and enlarged it but waited till Ash called out his first. And Ash did that exactly, though he didn't look too pleased to call out another one of his friends. He also understood why Annabelle called back Drifloon, he would have done the same if the battle was on his side. I'll try my best, he said quietly to his Pokeball. He threw it and out came Infernape. But like always when Ash would try his best there was the voice to put him down. You always said that on the battles that you usually lose, doesn't make much of a difference when it's you who's saying it. Ash said nothing to retaliate back, he just didn't want to think about it. So, what are you going to call on next? He asked Annabelle, noticing how quiet things were. Annabelle almost smiled, glad that he was at least talking to her. A good friend of mine that Scott gave me not too long ago. She answered. Then she threw her capsule device out to the field. Go my friend, do your best. In the flash of white light was the mighty gleam eyes Pokemon, Luxray. Luxray. He roared revealing shining sharp fangs trying to intimidate his opponent. And though Infernape was a bit put off by this, the fire type roared back with its own ferocity. In Infernape, both he and Ash realized that this could be similar to the battle they had with Boltner. This time Annabelle made her move first. Luxray, jumped behind it and used Thunder Fang. Luxray nodded, and with eagerness to battle and surprising agility, Luxray leapt high in the air with his teeth crackling with electricity. Rye. Luckily, Ash was able to spot this just in time. Infernape used Mach Punch to get Luxray away from you. He commanded the flame Pokemon just when Luxray landed behind Infernape. But Annabelle was able to counter this counter. Luxray tried to bite the arm. I know it might hurt you but it will also damage your opponent. She called out as a silver glow of power covered Infernape's arm when it swung. Most Pokemon would never do something that dangerous, but Annabelle's Luxray was a warrior at heart. Never faltering in his attack, Luxray took the brunt of the mock punch when it clamped onto the swinging attack, but like what Annabelle ordered, the Thunderfang was able to execute the attack before he was swung off Infernape's arm. Infernape are you alright? Ash glanced at the arm that took the full force of the attack, Infernape was trying to move it but the movements were stiff and jagged. His arm was paralyzed by the thunder fang. Ash observed through gritted teeth. Now the battle will be a lot harder for the both for them. Not that the results would be different with the injury. The voice said making Ash's and Infernape's assurance in the battle falter. Annabelle glanced over her Luxray. The gleam eyes Pokemon was shaking his head to null the pain. Right now the battle was doing decently, both parties had one attack on each other. But now it was time to ramp it up more. Alright Luxray I want you to charge toward Infernape and wait for my command. Luxray. Lux. The electric type began to charge toward the flame Pokemon, Fangs bared. 
Use flame thrower Infernape. Ash commanded trying to stop the attack before it could begin without harming Infernape's arm. In Infernape, he set about to release the torrent of fire from his mouth. Annabelle frowned expecting it. You know that you're too experienced to go for the direct attack Ash. Luxray, jump and use signal beam in his face. The lion-like Pokemon jumped high above again, dodging the stream of flame and put his paws in front of him to dive forward at Infernape. Infer. Now, Lux Rai. A purple beam shot out of Luxray's mouth just when the Pokemon was about a meter away from Infernape's face. Initially, a bug-type move would not have that much effect on a fighting type, but at point-blank range, and with the fact that Luxray is a Frontier Brains Pokemon, it wouldn't matter much. Infernape clutched his face in pain from the attack backing away from Luxray. Ash stared in horror as he observed his losing battle. How could he have missed that? This was just like the time with Buizel and Ominous Wind. And other battles as well, don't forget. As soon as someone actually puts strategy in a battle, you fall apart. You're weak, catch him and always will be. Ash said nothing, too weary of arguing with the voice. He needed to focus more, Infernape's almost out of battle and, wait. A fiery aura surrounded Infernape, and his irises shrunk into minuscule size. Enin fear r r a a p p p p p e e e His crown of fire burst into a new level of fury. Annabelle stared at the spectacle in awe of Infernape's remarkable ability, she grinned hoping that this will help Ash get into spirit. Luxray sensed this, and barked mentally to her to take another look. Ash's face was that of desperate resolve, he was clinging on to this ability to at least do some damage but not to win. It was dangerous for anyone with that mindset. Ash could harm himself greatly if he kept that up. Ash kept deciding what to do. When Infernape is like this, that means he can only take one more hit, but his attacks are boosted. I need to end this, I believe in Infernape, I need to depend on him and trust his skills. Even though your skills are nothing short but useless. Infernape used flamethrower on the ground. He ordered knowing what he had to do next. I'm depending on you. Fair for Nape. The flame Pokemon released the fire onto the ground like Ash said and created a barrier of fire on the ground due to the sheer power of it. What is he up to? Annabelle muttered to herself, Luxray kept at bay from the barrier of fire while looking for any signs of an opening. Now use dig with all you got. Ash gave his last command. Infernape summoned all his power within his being as he dug in the ground. Annabelle looked warily at the ground beneath Luxray's feet. She was no fool when it came to the attack dig, it would do major damage to Luxray, who had a low defense, adding on to the super effective attack. Then a hole broke through the ground behind Luxray, causing the Gleam Eyes Pokemon to look back in surprise. Lux. Luxray used Swift in the hole. Annabelle called out loud. Luxray. He jumped up above the hole seeing of the fiery aura of Infernape in it. He shifted his tail and sent the swirling stars of Swift down it. Luxray could see the mad fury of Infernape climbing up the hole when the attack hit him. Luxray. He cried in surprise when Infernape just continued on the attack. Oh no, Luxray. Annabelle cried when she realized that Luxray was now in a defenseless position in air. Infernape. The fire type cried when he used the final stage of dig. Luxra. Luxray cried out when he was hit, the electric type fell to the ground, fainted. Marin looked back and forth between the two Pokemon. All right, Luxray can no long continue to. I-N-F-E-R-N-A-P-E-E-E. -E -E. Ash's best Sinnoh fighter fell to his knees, in exhaustion, finally feeling the attack Swift made on him now as he was no longer in a ballistic rage. Ash silenced was not unexpected, he knew that Infernape couldn't last long and recalled him back without complaint. Annabelle and Marin gave startled looks at this, the referee soon just shrugged and called the match. Well, I guess both Pokemon can no longer to continue the battle. It's a double knockout. This battle is pointless, the girl still has two Pokemon while you only have one more left. Do you honestly think you could win this even with your last one? Your resolve has crumbled, just like with Paul and Tobias. Nothing you can do will matter. You're pathetic. I'm sorry Infernape. I failed you, Ash said quietly to the Pokeball. Before calling out his Pokemon to battle he once again called out to Annabelle, to settle it once and for all. 
Can I ask you a question Annabelle? Pikachu. Um, sure. She didn't know where this was going. In the next match, you're going to send out a powerhouse aren't you, one of your oldest Pokemon. Yes, my Scizor, I got her as a Scyther during my journey in Kanto. Why are you asking? Ash sighed, his just suspicions confirmed. Because, I have to resign from the battle. Pikachu. What? Are you crazy? Annabelle could not believe the words that were coming out of Ash's mouth. It was unfathomable for a trainer to utter those words for no good reason. She left her post and headed to his place on the battlefield. Why? Ash frowned. There's really not much use now. I only have one Pokemon left, and it's almost certain that I'll lose. There's really no point, not with my skills. Annabelle's eyes narrowed at this nonsense. Marin, would you please leave us for the moment? Marin nodded and walked out of the room leaving the two to themselves. Annabelle then continued. Is that it? The same thing happened last time we battled and you responded with vigor and enthusiasm, despite the fact that you lost. Now you fear the very thought of defeat. What happened to you in Sinnoh Ash that made you a former shell of yourself? Nothing happened to me. I'm just not that good of a trainer. Ash turned his eyes away from her, but she kept questioning him. Was it because of Paul and his opinions or Hunter J brutal treatment of Pokemon? Was it because of an organization that used Pokemon like tools? Ash said nothing so Annabelle went for the kill. Or, is it because of a foreign voice in your head that's convincing you you're not worth the effort? Ash's eyes widened, confirming her guess. He turned to her with shock and confusion plastered in his face. How did, how? I tell you about how I know later. First I need to collect my thoughts on the battle we had. Meet me at Cobalt Port East of here after you've rested your Pokemon. Ask for my name when you get there, the residents know me. You better have good answers to why you resigned Ash. With that Annabelle turned and left to Ash to his thoughts. Pikapi, Pikachu had been staring at his trainer from his arms for quite a while now after they left the Pokemon Center. Not even a peep has come from Ash's lips, the boy was in deep thought, deciphering what it could mean on Annabelle knowing about his, small, problem. Speaking of which, the voice had been silent, now that the battle was over. But it was to be expected, the voice usually only came out during battles. What's wrong? He finally responded to Pikachu. The electric type gave him a hard look as he put his paws on his hips. Oh, right. I'm one to talk. Pika Pikachu ka Pika. Pikachu almost yelled at his trainer. He wanted Ash to get out of this slump. Why was he back in it? Didn't Ash's mom talk him out of it? Well dear readers, she talked him out of it temporarily. Not every problem can be solved so quickly, and for Ash's case it will take time for him to break free of the clutches of the voice. It took 15 minutes to reach Cobalt Port. He and Pikachu never heard of this town and they could see why. The town was minuscule, even smaller than Pallet Town. The majority of the building's houses were near the sea's edge where small boats carried cargo near the shoreline. Majority of the architect was stone and wood with the tallest structure only being three stories high. But it certainly was lively. People bustled about their business, from the workers lifting boxes from the docks to people working in their small gardens in the back of town. There were lots of Pokemon too. Flying types were carrying letters and small parcels back and forth from each house, grass types helping the plants stay healthy and fighting and ground types working with heavy construction. One could say this would be the ideal small town to grow up in. Ash marveled at the sight, almost wishing he lived here for his youth. Pikachu, Pika Pi Pikachu Kachu Pika. Pikachu tugged on his sleeve shacking him out of his thoughts. Right, we need to find Annabelle. Ash saw someone walking by them and decided to ask him. Excuse me sir. The man stopped and turned to them. Yes, what is it? Do you know where I can find a girl named Annabelle in this town? To Ash and Pikachu's great surprise, the man's face broke into a massive grin. Well, of course, there isn't a person who wouldn't know the famous salon maiden. He pointed to a white and brownish building of the left side on town. She's right over there. Then the man looked slyly at Ash. You wouldn't happen to be on a date with her are you? Ash became very confused at this. A, a date. Why would anyone think that? Um, no, I'm sorry. Pika, hi. Ah oh well, have a good time and I'm glad I could be of service. 
The man waved them off as he left. All Ash could say was. That was weird. But the man spoke the truth as they saw Annabelle sitting in the courtyard outside of the building. She was in a fine wooden chair with a small table between her and another chair, her green hat off to the side. Annabelle saw them and smiled sadly but was still glad that Ash had the willingness to come. Just when Ash and Pikachu were about to sit down another man came from the building carrying a tray full of desserts. Ah. So your guest has arrived. The waiter said to Annabelle, here is your usual Miss Annabelle, along with another for the young man, and my signature chocolate pokefoot for the adorable Pikachu. He set down two fancy chocolate cakes in front of them along with two cup of steamy hot tea, with cream and sugar, and two glasses of milk. Then he set a bowl of dark brown pokefoot in front of Pikachu. Thank you, Mr. Vaughn. What's the charge I owe you? Annabelle thanked him. Mr. Vaughn as he was now called waved her offer off. On the house Miss Annabelle, I have a feeling you and your guests both need this. Call me if you something comes up. Who's that? Ash asked when Mr. Vaughn left. Things today were just getting more and more confusing. That was Mr. Vaughn, the owner of the bakery here. I'm kind of a regular customer here so he knows me well. Oh, I didn't know. Ash said watching Pikachu take a bite of the poke food. Pika. Pikachu squealed in delight tasting the flavor of the delicious treat. Pikachu Kachu Pika. Pika Pie Pie. Why, you are welcome Pikachu. I'm glad you like it. Annabelle smiled before turning to Ash who had just taken a bite of his cake, his eyes widening at the rich flavor. It's good is it not? She asked him. Ash had a small smile on his face. Yeah, it really is. Take a sip of the tea, the two combined make a really delicious accent to each other. Annabelle said taking a bite of her own cake. This was her favorite treat to get at this place, no matter what mood she was in, it always helped to lighten the day. But even with this she had to go into a deeper topic. So, why do you think you are not a good trainer? She asked when Ash was drinking his milk. Instantly he frowned and sighed. Isn't it obvious? He asked, looking at her as she should know the answer. No, it's actually very confusing to me. Ash scratched his head. I lost. So I lose too but I know I'm still a good trainer. She frowned. He was avoiding the question. Ash, tell me what is going on. About what? He gave her an exasperated look, one that carried the tiredness he felt in battle. About what you were thinking during the battle, what is that voice telling you that makes you so hesitant in its midst, makes you lose your resolve, and that makes you fear to lose so much that you shied away from our final stage of it. She stared at him with concern covering her face, so much that it made our hero shift uncomfortably in his seat. I don't know why I listen to the voice, I just do, most in the time in Sinnoh I could ignore it but now, now it's overwhelming. He said a bit harshly. Ash. Pikapi. It's, I, I just don't want my Pokemon to get hurt, that I only win through blunders and that I'm afraid that I would treat them like tools in the heat of the match. Annabelle nearly laughed at the irony of it all, she of most people could. So, that's the reason, well Ash, I can understand where you are coming from, especially from someone who goes the extra mile like you often do. But you are missing something important Ash, something that most trainers don't realize but are always aware of. What's that? Ash asked Bewilder after he took another bite of his cake. Instead of answering, Annabelle took a Pokeball from her belt and released the Pokemon inside. Esp Esp. Espeon called from the ground. Espeon, do you mind jumping on the table so we can see you better? The Sun Pokemon did hop up and greeted Pikachu. Espeon. Pikachu. He offered her some Pokefood which she gladly accepted. Now Ash, what do you see? Annabelle asked gesturing towards the Pokemon. Um, I see Pikachu and Espeon. Ash asked densely. What else was he supposed to see? Annabelle smiled ruefully at his thickness. No, there's something else Ash. Oh, now he realized. I see my starter, my best friend who I would do anything for. I see your best friend as well Annabelle, and in some aspects who is my friend as much as Pikachu is yours. Good answer but not what I was looking for Ash. She petted Espeon who leaned to her touch. Lately you have been seeing them as humans Ash and I must admit that is natural considering their remarkable emotions. But they're not, they are Pokemon Ash. The young trainer looked at Annabelle, 
befuddled at her words, yet accepting that he had been seeing them a bit like that. So what does that mean? With all their vast differences, Pokemon have one thing in common that humans always have differences on. They love to battle. They crave a good fight, don't you guys? Pikachu Kachu. S. Espeon. Ash's eyes widened realizing she spoke the truth. He couldn't remember a Pokemon who didn't love the taste of battle. Annabelle continued on. Pokemon, don't really care if they win or lose most of the time, though winning is great and all, but what they really want to do is to grow strong and show off their stuff. They accept that they will get hurt in battle but they really don't care whether or not it is their blunder or their trainers. That is why they can love humans so much, humans can bring out that inner potential which they can never achieve in the wild. You understand don't you? Ash scratched his head again. Yeah, I do, just that I never thought Pokemon to be like that, I guess. You know a lot about Pokemon Annabelle, lot more than I do. She could feel the ghost of a blush on her cheeks. Not as much as I would like to Ash, but thank you anyway. Now to go on the next subject. Which is, about you were winning through blunders. Ash cringed when he heard this. It's true. He said before taking a drink of milk. Even with my battle with you last year, I only won through losing the lighting. Annabelle rolled her eyes. Do you know that only a handful of trainers win by pure tactic and skill alone? Ash shook his head. Do you also remember how you won against the other frontier brains? It was with skill and tactic alone. Yeah but most of my battles of one have been through blunders. Yeah, and a good trainer knows to use them their advantage Ash, just like you do. True strength is not shown by skill alone but by also using circumstance to your advantage. Most trainers I have fought never consider using them to help them with the battle. In fact I think you're the only one who did it in the past three years. The only other one was this guy the first fought during my first year, but then again he lost to me three times before using a circumstance to his advantage on the fourth battle. Really? Ash asked honestly surprised. He couldn't help but wondered if that previous trainer was Reggie. Yep. Now about using Pokemon as tools in battle and I have to say that probably the most ridiculous thing I ever heard someone like you say. She said making Ash sink his head down. You know far better than that Ash. And so do your Pokemon, right Pikachu? Pi Kachu Pi Cha. Pikachu rubbed alongside his arm to prove his point. But Ash still wasn't really convinced. How do you know about the voice? Do you know what it is? He asked. Annabelle rested her chin on her hand. I'll tell you as soon as we're finished. As for the other question, I have theories. Theories. Ash almost snorted but then agreed that they should finish their dessert. It was not every day that he and Pikachu could have chocolatey delights. In fact he couldn't remember the last time someone treated him to desert. Hey Annabelle. He spoke when he finished his cake. Hmm. Thanks for the cake. Not many of my friends treat me to these sorts of things. Pikachu and I really enjoyed this. Annabelle grinned. You're welcome Ash. I'm more than happy to do this for you. Would you like to do this more often? For some reason hearing this, Ash felt the funny feeling again bubble up inside him at the thought of him, Pikachu and Annabelle eating together like this again. Of course. Right buddy? He asked Pikachu. Hi Pika. When they left after thanking Mr. Vaughn to the path back toward the battle tower, Ash had more questions to ask. Okay, if I'm not a bad trainer like you said then how come I have been losing lately to people who are equal to my level of experience? Well, that is a good question Ash and not many people would be able to give you the right answer. It is because of your lack of confidence in yourself. Ash took on a confused look not understanding why that would matter in battle. Can you explain a bit more? You have faith in your Pokemon right? Ash nodded. But you don't have faith in yourself. I heard you during our battle. You kept taking all the blame for every little thing that went wrong Ash. When a Pokemon becomes close to a trainer, a bond is formed between the two. Pokemon rely not only for the trainer to give the orders and to have faith in them but for the trainer to have faith in themselves. You need to have resolve in your actions, if you lack that then the Pokemon will start to lose their resolve too, you see. Just like what happened during Buizel and Infernape, you started off confident and proud, but as soon as you began to second guess yourself, your Pokemon weakened. The Pikachu trainer marveled at the insight of these words. Why is that? 
Why do Pokemon depend on a trainer's confidence in himself? Annabelle smiled. No one knows why exactly, but there has been a bond there for all time whether for good or for evil. Our hero looked back to where Team Galactic had powerful Pokemon. Jupiter, Mars and other members were confident that they would win. That's why they were able to do very well in battle. Can I ask you a question Ash? Annabelle spoke. Why are you afraid of losing so much? Ash hesitated before answering. Because, I feel like it sets me back from my goals, that I won't be able to get stronger unless I can win. Unexpectedly Annabelle burst out laughing. Hey it's not funny. Ash cried out defiantly. Ah, it's not you, it's just that we are more similar than I thought. She let out a small chuckle. So you're afraid of losing because you're afraid it will set you back. Ash let me tell you something that I had to learn the hard way. Losing is a sure part of life, and it is a different cycle of growing. If you don't lose then you won't improve, if you don't lose then there is no excitement in life. Take it from the girl who never lost a battle when she was 10. Wow, who was that? Ash eyes widen at the thought of someone never losing at such a young age. Me silly. Annabelle answered bemused by him. Due to my, stronger bond with Pokemon, I became a very talented young trainer when I went through the Kanto League. Wait, you went through Kanto four years ago? Ash interrupted. Yes, and I never lost a battle. No trainer or gym leader could defeat me. Because of this I attracted certain attention. What kind of attention? He feared that Team Rocket came after young Annabelle. Scott. Annabelle smiled wistfully. He came to me looking for talented trainers to enter a program to become a frontier brain. I became slightly interested at the thought of becoming like the elite. But once he told me that I had to go under guidance from an actual frontier brain, me being the stubborn little girl who never lost and had hardly any human contact said I didn't need anyone to teach me how to be good. Scott was determined to get me in but I had to learn to be humbled though. So he called in Brandon to battle me. You battled Brandon when you were 10. Ash and Pikachu were in shock. The very thought of them battling Brandon when Ash was 10 almost made them sick to their stomachs. Yeah, and unsurprisingly I lost. Badly. I was crushed by him like a Groudon stepping on a Caterpie. Flashback. On an open field a girl with purple hair clutch her fainted Eevee in her arms. She had shorts, a white shirt and purple jacket on her, but that's not important. What was important were the tears streaming down her face as the man she was battling walked over to her. It was Brandon, only he was four years younger and had little less wrinkles on his face. His eyes held no pity for the girl in her tears. Nor did they hold no pride for the overwhelming victory he just had over her. He just listened to the girl who kept apologizing to her Evie about their lost. Finally he had enough of this and spoke up. Child, are you really going to let this set you back, a small defeat? The girl looked up at him with fierce and wet eyes. There was inner strength and defiance in them but also held a desperate grasping to everything he said. Is defeat that hard on one such as you? This time the girl spoke. You're one to talk, you could defeat anyone with the power you have. Brandon just rolled his eyes at the girl's ignorance. Do you think that I was always this strong? Then you are naive girl. No. I learned through many battles from both losing and winning. If you do not learn to handle a loss then you shall never know true strength girl. You will never truly know any joys in life, you will never be able to improve your mistakes. And I've seen the look in your eyes, you desire to be strong enough to look after others. The girl avoided his eye now, telling him he was right. The battle frontier does not have time for a person who crumbles at the thought of defeat. Come back when you can conquer it. We're leaving Scott, this was a waste of my time. Brandon called to a slightly thinner Scott who had been watching the scene quietly to leave. But as soon as they had their back turned the purple haired girl stood up with her Evie still in arms. Then teach me how to accept losing. She called at Brandon. If I'm really that naive then teach me not to be. This halted the two in their tracks. So you really want to learn. Why? The pyramid king asked her over his shoulder. The small child rubbed the tears off of her cheeks. It's like you said. I want to be able to look after others. Brandon gave the girl a stern look. Then can you humble yourself to learn. The child cringed from the older man's stare but continued. I can, humble myself. What I mean is, that I can already do it, 
as you can see with my strong bond to my Pokemon and all, I just need to learn really is to humble myself to, people. Brandon huffed. If you can admit that then maybe the Battle Frontier can actually teach you something. Scott came up from behind him with a large grin on his face. Glad you accept her Brandon. So Annabelle I'll ask again, do you wish to promote the art of Pokemon battles and become a Frontier Brain? He offered her his hand. I do not need to tell you Annabelle's answer. End flashback. Pika. Chu Pipika. Pikachu exclaimed after Annabelle was done telling her tale. Wow, so that's how you came to become a Frontier Brain. Ash asked wanting to hear more. Yeah, but I still had to choose which Frontier Brain I had to spend three months with. Of course I chose Brandon to teach me. Even as a frontier brain myself, I have a lot to learn before I'm ready to fight my old teacher again. Annabelle answered. So is he the reason why you know about the, voice? Annabelle thought about it before finally answered his question. Brandon told me after you received your seventh frontier symbol. He said to me that your battle style was different from what I dealt with. It was. He asked. Only just a little but enough to get someone experienced as Brandon to notice. Then when you battled Paul at Lake Acuity, Brandon asked Paul's brother to report how the battle went for you. From what his brother did tell him, you lost a lot of your fire by then, mostly you relied only on your Pokemon's strength and not with your own. Obviously something changed in you before you went to Sinnoh but after you battled me and it only has gotten worse than after. So what does this mean? Ash asked, now really worried that the voice had changed him so much. Why do I have this voice in my head? Brandon thinks, he thinks that it is because of having the king of Pocalantis posses you. Our hero's jaw dropped hearing this. How is that so? Didn't Brandon, I dunno, seal that thing up after he defeated him? Yes, he did. But do you honestly think someone can go through being possessed by a being of evil and not be affected by it? Ash was about to say yes but then realized that he had been affected by the incident greatly whether he was aware of it or not. No. Not really. The voice you have Ash, is a psychological rebound from the incident. All the negativity you felt for yourself and the very, very different views of Paul and Hunter J accumulated to what you now know as the voice. Tell me, how long has it been in your head? She watched him narrowed his eyes thinking back to when it first happened. I didn't start hearing an actual voice until after my first battle with Paul during when Hunter J first attacked. But I remember a, depressing feeling inside if me when I battled Brandon for the second time. I never thought it would have affected me like this. He placed a hand over his heart and turned away. I never really thought about it like that, nor did I ever thought something was wrong with me, it just grew onto me to the point that I thought it was natural. Hey, I guess that's why I never told anyone this. Not even Pikachu. Pika ka pi pika pi. Hmm, sorry buddy. Hey, Annabelle place a hand on his shoulder. Don't beat yourself up. You've already done enough of that today. Ash nodded. By the way, why did Brandon tell you about all of this? Did he tell any of the other frontier brains? Annabelle denied this much to his relief. No only me. I can sense human emotions to a degree though I'm not good doing it compared to sensing a Pokemon emotions. He wanted to give me a heads up if I ever met you again, to see how much it really is affecting you. Plus, Brandon trusts me with these sorts of things. Well, I'm glad Brandon is looking out for me. But can I have one more question? Ash asked when they continued walking. Yes. She noticed his eyes had a downtrodden look about them. After today, I don't think I will be able to battle like I used to. I mean that I want to battle like I did when I met you but this voice, it's killing me, it always degrades any confidence I receive from anyone. I can't be like I used to until it leaves my head. How do you guy plan on making me a frontier brain when I can't even complete a simple battle? Annabelle placed a figure on her chin. Well, this is mostly a psychological problem with mythical properties which means that it can't be cured by any modern medicine. One way we can cure it, is to go through months of long and agonizing therapy. Ash couldn't help but cringe, Gary used to tell him scary stories of therapy treatments when they were young. However that would take too long and would be boring for both you and me. So we will have to go with plan B. What's plan B? Ash asked still a bit worried about it. 
Annabelle broke into the grin she used when she was about to go into the heat of battle. Plan B is to be short and be able to be done in less than three months. So what is it? We, beat it out of you. Ash blinked, not sure he heard right. Excuse me. Hi. Annabelle smirked. You heard me. I'll teach you a method that will be sure to cancel out anything that voice has to say, while making you stronger in battle and bonding with your Pokemon. Wait. What did you mean by beating it out of me? That doesn't sound too good. This really wasn't sounding too good. Annabelle just laughed at his behavior though. Don't worry Ash, nothing bad will happen to you alright. This seemed to make him calm down though he took on a concerned look on his face. Do you really think this will work? I mean this is kind of ridiculous once you think about it. Ash said. Annabelle scoffed and hit him lightly on the arm. It will only work if you believe in yourself, and your Pokemon. She took his hand and held it up. Ash. I don't know if it means anything to you, but I will be here for you and Pikachu the entire time all right. It was a simple oath, but it held deep meaning. Ash took one look in Annabelle's purple eyes, then something clicked in his mind. She was no longer just his friend, she was his equal. Not a rival, an enemy, an elder or a good friend, but someone who would watch his back at all times because she can. With the best grin he felt on his face all day, knowing Pikachu would support his actions and with a promise to improve, Ash clenched Annabelle's hand in a firm grip and said. This means a lot. Annabelle, thank you. I'd with them, fight like them. Week 1 of the initiation. Ash woke from his slumber and stared at the ceiling from his bed. It had been five days since his breakdown and his talk with the salon maiden. Annabelle actually wanted to start with the training right away but then had a bombardment of paperwork thus halting her before she got started. From sunrise to sunset, the salon maiden worked in her office on the top floor in order to get done as soon as possible. However this didn't stop Annabelle from teaching our hero some basics of the battle frontier. So far he's learned how to fill out paperwork, how to look over a battle faculty and the proper way to handle phone calls. Needless to say, Annabelle was a great teacher. She was patient with him when he goofed up, explained complex subjects when he needed help and encouraged him when the voice or his own wavering self-esteem started to beat him down. He was a bit tired of waiting around though. Both he and Pikachu were surprised that he could last this long without going nuts. But yesterday night, Annabelle was finally done with the very last piece of paper to fill out. Now today was the day that she will show him how to beat the voice and to help not only of his Pokemon to get stronger but also he himself. With a sigh Ash helped himself out of bed and woke Pikachu up as he got dressed. He finished when Pikachu helped himself of his trainer's shoulder. The kitchen was empty differing from the normal scene of Pokemon eating their breakfast and Annabelle watching over from the counter they had grown used to. This told the two that they were already out and about. Pika Pipi Ka Pai. Ash stared from his breakfast to see what Pikachu was going on about. The electric type was excitingly pointing towards the window. When Ash peered outside, he saw Annabelle talking to a very tall Pokemon in front of her. It looked like they were in a deep discussion about something important. Do you want to see what they're up to buddy? He asked Pikachu. The mouse Pokemon nodded in affirmation. Hi Pika Kachu Pika. They both headed out to meet them. Closer inspection showed that Annabelle was back in her normal frontier brain gear. Now that they were nearer to Annabelle they could see who the Pokemon was. It was covered in bright red feathers that seemed to spark with fire and yellow feathers layering its feet. White feathers covered its head and shoulders covering it like a jacket. The arms were muscled and its sharp beak grizzled and cracked signifying old age. The Pokemon turned his razor eyes at the two. Blaziken. He alerted Annabelle to their presence. Oh, Ash, good morning, did you sleep well? Annabelle turned to the duo with a smile. Um, yeah I did. Thanks for asking Annabelle. So who's this? Ash pointed to the Blaziken ignoring the funny feeling that had been coming more often this week. Blazy Ken Blaze. The Blaziken interrupted putting a protective arm in front of her. Ash stepped back a bit obviously intimidated by the larger than average Blaziken. It's all right, they're the ones I was talking about. She soothed the Blaze Pokemon. Ash and Pikachu, it is my pleasure to introduce to Rook the Blaziken. She gestured to the Pokemon with flair. Ash looked to Pikachu for a moment. Rook. He asked her. 
he never thought Annabelle would be one who nicknamed name a Pokemon. I didn't name him, she said as if she read his thoughts. It's not uncommon for an OL elderly Pokemon to name themselves while they're still wild. Oh I didn't know that. Ash scratched his head. He felt a little ignorant now. Annabelle smiled. Don't worry Ash. Even Pokemon professors do not know this. Rook is the one who told me and you know that most people can't communicate on that level with Pokemon. This made our hero feel better but now he had to ask about training. So what about the training? You said we would start today. He stared at her as she started to walk past him. Indeed I did. Would you follow me please? Ash, Pikachu and Blaziken walked behind Annabelle as she led them deeper and deeper in the forest. Soon the overgrowth was so thick that it blackened the entire ground. Ah, uh, Annabelle, not to be judgmental but don't you think that this is kind of dangerous to be walking this deep in a forest without a path? Ash looked around. Strange Pokemon sounds were echoing throughout the woods but it was so dark that you couldn't see them. Don't worry Ash. I know where I am going. Just keep following me. And just when she said that light started to burst through the branches. A few more steps, the trees cleared out completely. The scenery showed a huge open meadow with a clear pound shimmering in the sunlight. Annabelle stepped out further in the meadow and turned around to face them. Gentlemen, I present you to my personal battleground. Here I learn how to focus myself to be a better trainer and help my Pokemon to learn about tapping into their inner selves. Ash and Pikachu's eyes widened at her speech, they could feel the excitement rising in them with every word. Annabelle continued. It is here that my Pokemon and I learn to work together with nature and our surroundings to bond further than any trainer we will fight. This is it. This was where Pikachu and he could finally get past his handicap. They will now learn Annabelle's secret to strength and power. It was now the time to. And now to start us off, you will be fighting Blaziken Ash. Wait. What? Hi. What? Ash wasn't sure he was hearing right. Annabelle wanted him to fight a Pokemon. He stared at Rook the Blaziken, who was staring at Ash with the face that could only be described as, this is going to hurt you. Annabelle smirked a bit. It was really fun to see his expressions. Yeah, was all she said. But, but, but why? Ash eyes were bulging out of his sockets. I'm not a Pokemon. I can't fight a Pokemon. But you need to. You need to learn how they fight. Haven't you ever personally trained with a Pokemon just using yourself? This stopped Ash in his tracks making him think back to the time he battled Mickey in her Skarmory with his Cyndaquil, on how she shared her tale on personally training her dual steel flying type and he applying the same thing to help Cyndaquil learn to control his fire type moves. The results were awesome, Cyndaquil learned so much in just one day. Yeah, I did once. He said. Now she had him. And let me guess, it was a huge improvement. Ash shifted his poster telling her all that she needed to know. I've been doing the same all last year Ash. That's how I have been getting so strong and it's given me so much insight to what a Pokemon is. Now it's your turn to learn, I know you can do this. But the ability to, he was interrupted when Annabelle threw a small object at his direction, he managed to catch it. He saw it was a small gold coin. You know what that is, don't you? She asked. Yeah, it's the ability symbol. But I don't understand, I've already have one. Ash stared at it in confusion. I know that's silly. But do you know why I give that out to trainers? Ash and Pikachu both shook their heads. It's because I use my abilities to help out trainers learn their ability. To test them on how they handle the battlefield. Now I'm going to use the same thing to help you get that fighting spirit back. Ash looked at Pikachu before saying. Oh. I think I get it now. But I still don't get why I have to fight Blaziken. Blazy. Rook shook his fist at him. I mean Rook. He corrected his mistake. That's because you need to get used to fighting a Pokemon. Rook here can teach a human that without harming them, much. She added on hesitantly, but first I need to get you in the proper gear. She started to walk off but stopped when Rook cried out. Blazy. Wait Rook, he can't. Suddenly Ash felt Rook's fist collide in his stomach. The trainer was thrown back on the ground from its force. Pikachu jumped away from his shoulder in time and stared in horror at his trainer as Annabelle instantly went to Ash's side. Pikapi. Rook. Why did you do that? She began to look over Ash for any sign of anything being broken. Blazy Ken Ken. 
What do you mean he's all right? Then Annabelle watched in amazement as Ash got up with little effort as though he didn't just receive a punch from a powerful fighting type Pokemon. Ash, stay down, you might have something broken. Ash gave her a pained and confused look. What are you talking about? I'm fine, it just hurts a bit. What? I don't understand how. Rook placed a hand on her shoulder. Blaziken Khan Ziken. This seemed to make her calm down some. You sure? Blaken. All right. Um, is there something I'm missing here? Ash stared at the two in confusion. He was now realizing how awkward it was to be in a discussion he didn't understand. Pika. Hi Pikachu Chu Pika Pi. Pikachu asked. Don't worry about it Ash and Pikachu just something I need to figure out. Annabelle said, then she beckoned Rook to step in front of Ash. All right now Rook here is going to show you the basics. I need to run to the battle tower to get things settled. Despite of the situation he was in Ash grinned. It was nice that she was looking after for him. All right. Come back soon, okay. Just try not to get yourself killed okay. With that she left out to the woods and room called to his attention. Blazy Blaziken Blaze. Rook tried to communicate with the human trainer the best he could. The Pokemon pointed to his fist and back to Ash, our hero thought hard about the message. You're going to try to hit me right and you want me to dodge right? He asked the Blaziken. The Pokemon nodded and then got into fighting stance. Ash, awkwardly, did the same. Like this. For an answer he got nailed in the cheek and once again thrown down to the ground. Pikachu, the electric type side this was going to be a long, long day. X. Ash eventually got the hang of learning to dodge when Rook threw a punch at him. However this didn't make much of a difference because he still got hit by the Blaze Pokemon. It took another hour for him to dodge the first attack then throw a fist back. Then again it was blocked by Rook's arms and he got hit again. Pikachu gave encouragement to his trainer. Often zapping Ash when he got slightly dreary and nuzzling him when the boy thought down on himself. But little did the duo know that this exercise Annabelle set up for them had alternative effect. The more Ash got into the fight the more he felt, well, confident better in himself than he had previously. And when the voice tried to get in the way, feeling the actual rush of battle and the burning freedom that came with it helped him overcome it. Slowly he was re-learning what it was like to enjoy battles again. All right let's go again. Ash charged again at Rook. The fire type just smiled and just sidestepped the attack, sending Ash going face down to the grass. Pika Pika Pichu Pika Pi. Pikachu giggled at his trainer antics. It didn't take the electric type long to figure out what the salon maiden was trying to do with this. All it took was the look of blissful enjoyment on Ash's face to tell Pikachu that this would help him in furthering himself in his own self-esteem. Pika Pi. Pikachu Chu Ka. Pikachu encouraged his trainer to get up and try again. Ash rose to his feet without much of a problem and got ready to attack Rook again. But then Rook raised his hand to stop him. Hey, what's going on Rook? Ash asked walking up to the fire type with Pikachu hoping up on his shoulder. Rook pointed to the forest clearing with his thump appendage. Blazy Blaze Khan. Just when he said it out came Annabelle with Metagross in tow. Ash looked at them for a bit and then noticed that a box was right behind them floating by the blue glow of Psychic. Hey, Annabelle. What is with the floating box? Ash asked when he came up to her. You'll know soon enough. She said to him before turning to her steel type. Metagross would you set those down now please? Meta. Metagross replied cheerfully. With careful thought, the box landed with a soft, thud. Thank you my friend. Annabelle called him back to his Pokeball and then went to the box. Well do you two not want to see what's inside it? She asked Ash and Pikachu. Oh right. They reached out to open the lid and revealed the contents to be, Pokeballs. Ash asked confused. Um, Annabelle, why do we need a bunch of Pokeballs, are we going to catch something? The salon maiden took one out of the package. Oh these are not empty Pokeballs Ash. They have Pokemon in them. Yours to be exact and I am excited that you have so many friends to meet. Ash and Pikachu's eyes widen. Hey, how did you get those? I called Professor Oak to make the transfer. As your Battle Frontier teacher, I have the authorization to do that. She smirked. You at least could have told me. Ash voiced sounding a little disappointed. Annabelle's smirk faded. 
I kind of wanted to make it a surprise. I didn't mean to offend you. She said sincerely. Ash accepted that with good grace and took the pokeball from her hand. I understand. Well let's see everybody. He threw the capsule device. Come out. A flash of white light revealed a small crustacean Pokemon with oversized claws. Core Corfish. He cried with excitement of being let out. The ruffian Pokemon then sensed something behind him and turned around to his trainer first. Core Core. The crayfish-like Pokemon greeted his trainer by placing his claws in his hands. Hey Corfish buddy. Good to see you again. Pikachu jumped down from Ash's shoulder to say hello to his Hoenn friend. Pika Pipachu. Pi Ka Pai Chu. Cor Fish. Fish. Then Corfish realized that there was someone else there too. He turned around to see Annabelle. Hello Corfish, remember me. She greeted him. Corfish Cor. The water type squealed in delight and then scrambled up Annabelle's back and onto her head while making happy sounds. Annabelle laughed at this and Rook narrowed his eyes at the water type's antics. I'll take that as a yes. She giggled and took him of her head to pet him. Meanwhile Ash stared at the sight with an odd thought. Most girls would have cringed on having a large crustacean Pokemon walking all over their back with pointy legs. Annabelle, however made it seem like it was natural to her. Then it occurred to Ash that Annabelle didn't have much of a preference of Pokemon like most girls he met had. Misty preferred water types. May liked Pokemon that were cute and had lucky moves. And Don also liked Pokemon that were cute and small. Annabelle didn't have any preference for a Pokemon, they just had to be, well Pokemon. And he liked that, particularly, for some reason, in a girl. Ash what are you staring at? Annabelle asked amusingly while struggling to hold the water type. Corfish was being overly excited at Annabelle's presence and continued to scramble over her arms and back. She was almost blushing at his gaze and decided to make him stop by teasing him about it. Ash for some unknown reason had his face heat up and felt the funny feeling again. Oh I didn't notice. He then remembered the box full of his pokeballs. Do you think we should get the rest out? Annabelle laughed a bit when Corfish started to nibble of her collar. All right, but, hey stop that, do you think, hee hee, that you could get Corfish off of me? Oh right. Come get off of Annabelle Corfish. You can visit her later. You could see the disappointment in the water type's eyes as he grudgingly got off the salon maiden. Now that she was free from her friendly captor, Annabelle headed to the box and took some pokeballs and begun to release the creatures inside. Ash joined her after releasing his Sinnoh team and with their combined effort Ash's Pokemon were out and about looking around the meadow and greeting their trainer and Pikachu. They were so busy with the Pokemon that they almost didn't hear Annabelle when she called out to them. Hey everyone. Can you all gather together? It was almost like a spell was cast over our hero's Pokemon, minus Rook who right behind Annabelle, and they gathered behind Ash and Pikachu without so much as a peep. This obviously wigged Ash out and when he looked at the frontier brain he spotted a small camera in her hand that he recognized from her other outfit. Hope you don't mind that I take a small photo of you and your Pokemon. She asked. Ah, sure. No problem, right guys? Ash asked his Pokemon. The loud chorus of agreement came from behind him. I'll take that as a yes. Hi Ka. All right, now smile. Annabelle called out. As any Pokemon could, they showed their grins to the camera while surrounding their smiling trainer and his starter. X. After the photo the Pokemon were still around each other, the only difference being Ash, Pikachu, Rook and Annabelle being in the front. Ash gave an uncertain look towards her before turning to his team. Well guys, I'm sure you're wondering why you are here, well I, Annabelle held up a hand, silencing him. She also made another mental note to teach him how to be ready for a speech. I need to get a pager to keep track of all of them. She thought with a sigh. I'll take over from here. She said to him before turning to the crowd of Pokemon. All of Ash's Pokemon. Listen. Your trainer, Ash, is now learning from to be a battle frontier brain by me. And he needs all the help he can get. Hey. He is now learning a new way of training to help of you all, and that involves all of you to give him your support. Loud cheers came from the Pokemon. Ash will be training with you personally, that means that he will take your attacks, handle your tackles and be your opponent in the fight. Can you do that for him? A louder cheer came from them. 
I know this might be cruel, but I really want to see his face. Annabelle thought with a smirk. Now go beat him up. With this said, Ash's eyes widened when the Pokemon with much enthusiasm charged towards their trainer. Soon enough Ash was being bombarded by them all and Annabelle was high-fiving Rook. When he did get out of the mess, Ash marched up to Annabelle with anger. Why did you do that? He yelled. Annabelle laughed at his face, her mission a success. To get them in the mood. She fibbed. Now which one do you want to start with? They talked about which Pokemon Ash should start begin to battle. The Pallet Town trainer said he should begin with Pikachu as the electric type would be careful about harming him too much. Annabelle thought about it, but then said that wouldn't be a good idea. Pikachu is a very fast and powerful Pokemon. Pikachu thanked her for that. Ash needed to work on a Pokemon that still needed work and was big enough to handle it. So they decided on Bayleaf, who agreed with Annabelle to be careful around her, precious trainer. Ash and Bayleaf started off simple such as dodging, tackling and few vine whips and razor leaves here and there. Annabelle observed the two with a smile on her face. Ash was looking like he was having so much fun as he fought with his Pokemon and he was lasting much longer than when she first started out. Once the trainer got the hang of it, other Pokemon begun to join in as well. Hey Ash. Annabelle called for him. Ash, who is currently dodging Quilava's flame wheels, stopped. What is it? He yelled out catching his breath. Though he just started a few hours ago, already he could see improvement in their moves and the voice wasn't being a hindrance like it normally was. Do you mind if my Pokemon and I join in? Yeah, sure. We'll love to meet your Pokemon. He watched her smile and closed her eyes for a while. Aren't you going to call them? He asked. I already did. She said opening her eyes. Just then the trees rustled behind her and out came all her Pokemon. Espeon, Alakazam, Cherim, Beautifly, Drifloon, Dratini, Scizor, and Luxray. Annabelle then released Metagross to join them. The Pokemon, including Rook didn't need orders to know what they needed to do next. They immediately went to work with Ash's Pokemon with the training. Of course they weren't going full out but enough to work each other into a sweat. When it was time to take a break Annabelle offered to go and get them some Pecha Berry juice while Ash looked over the Pokemon. Ash himself was a little flattered by the offer, normally the girls he traveled with would have made him get the juice. Um thanks Annabelle. He watched her smile and then headed off to the trees. He also observed Scizor and Rook follow after her but his attention was turned elsewhere when Gibble began to chew on Luxray's mane. Gibble. Gibble. That is not eatable. Lux. X. Switching to Pokemon translations. My lady wait up. Annabelle halted when she heard Rook's grizzled voice. She turned around to see her two eldest Pokemon following her. What's wrong? She asked, it a bit unusual to see the two together, especially with their fierce rivalry for being the strongest. The two caught up with her and bowed slightly. It is nothing much, Scizor said. Not with this hot head at least. Hot head. You have nerve to talk young one. Rook shook his fist at the bug type. Before he could say anything else though Annabelle interrupted. What's nothing much? Annabelle was curious to what they could be concerned about. The two stopped their quarrel and the Blaziken spoke first. It concerns the young human in your care. Do you think that teaching him how to fight will be enough to get that curse from his head? She sighed. Well, it is not exactly common for someone to have a negative second voice caused by a magical evil king but battling seems to work. Brandon was able to expel the king of Pocalantis by defeating Ash, so I'll follow the same method. The only difference is that Ash had to do it himself. Annabelle explained even though she herself didn't understand it. We understand trainer. Is there anything we can do to help maybe? Scizor asked. No it is alright. I'll let you know if anything comes up. They reach outside the woods. But what do you think of him though? He's different from the normal type of trainers. Rook huffed. I admit, he is better than the average. But he reminds me of a young Torchic I taught when I was still wild. The Pokemon was talented and had potential, but the young one was very inconsistent and still unseasoned. The boy is the same. If you can remind him of some of his past battles, you could help him further to triumph his opponents in battle, it what I taught the Torchic. Annabelle thought about this. That's not a bad idea honestly. X. For the next few days Ash kept battling and training with his Pokemon. 
sometimes he had to fight against the Salon's Maiden's Pokémon as well. Our hero managed to get bruises, scratches, light burns and sore muscles. He felt great. He discovered new ways to battle. One involved using each of his Pokémon's body size to emphasize their attacks and another one was to use close combat counter shields for physical attacks. Annabelle even offered to pair up with him against the Pokémon. Much to Ash's surprise Annabelle was a good fighter, this was proven further when he went up against her and soon found himself on the ground with his arm twisted painfully behind his back. That day Ash and his Pokémon swore he would never ever get on her bad side, ever. It was one lazy afternoon when Ash held a huge grin on his face with Pikachu on his shoulder looking equally proud. Annabelle noticed this. You two look like you just won a Pokemon League. What's going on? The trainer pointed his thumb towards his chest. I finally perfected the two new strategies just now. He declared proudly. Well congrats Ash. I'm impressed that you did it so quickly. Of course, he had a lot of help from the Frontier Brain, but she didn't want to ruin the moment. Ash noticed this and quickly fixed his mistake. Well you helped out a lot Annabelle. It would have taken much longer if it hadn't been for you. Though Annabelle was getting better at handling Ash's compliments, there was still a ghost of a blush that peeped on her face. Thanks Ash but do not forget you're the one who thought it on your own on the second day. That itself is impressive. Thanks. I can't wait to try these out against my next battle. Then why don't you try it now my dear lad? A voice came from behind them. Then two trainers turned around to a figure wearing a black business suit, with giant white buttons. His rouge hair was done oddly in appendages sticking out against his face but lacked the ones on top of his head. Tucker.